So when we talk about the voltage level 52 kV and below, that is the range of medium voltage, the most commonly used circuit breaker is a vacuum circuit breaker. Undoubtedly, it plays a very crucial role in the medium voltage switchgear. And in this video, we are going to talk about the different components of the vacuum circuit breaker. Hello everyone and welcome to the video. If you are new here, my name is Gaurav J. On this channel, I post videos related to electrical engineering in the easiest way. So if you are interested in simplifying electrical engineering, then definitely do consider subscribing with bell notification icon turned on. Now coming back to our vacuum circuit breaker. So what you can see on your screen is the 3D model of indoor type air insulated uh, uh, AIS type vacuum circuit breaker. So if you see here, uh, the major portion of this is the interrupter, which is this portion you can see. You can see this is incoming uh, supply you can connect here. This is outgoing. Then uh, in front you will have the operating mechanism and also all the control circuitries that are required. So this handle what you can see here is the handle necessary to charge the spring. Uh, so both the options are available. Either you can charge it manually or uh, also using the uh, motors. So these are uh, the bushings which will be connected and we'll talk about uh, each and every part of this in the uh, in, in few minutes. So this is a vacuum circuit breaker here. So again the point to note here is that what we are going to talk is indoor type air insulated switchgear but most of the parts will be similar for gas insulated types uh, circuit breaker as well. Right, so this is how the vacuum circuit breaker looks and most commonly used in the medium voltage, voltage below than 52 kV. So the first portion is the vacuum interrupter. So what you can see is the image of a vacuum interrupter. Now if you notice in the previous video we talked about the high voltage uh, SF6 circuit breakers wherein the interrupter had two different types of contacts. One is the main contact which carries the normal system current and another one is the arcing contact which is responsible for carrying the abnormal current which happens in case of a fault. But here in the vacuum circuit breaker we do not have dedicated contacts for that. These are the only contact. One is the fixed contact, another one is the moving contact. These contacts are responsible for carrying both normal as well as the abnormal current and this is placed inside a vacuum bottle everything there is nothing inside it's only the vacuum and only two contacts are here and also if you see the pole structure now each phase r y and b is called as one pole or one phase so if you see the structure here you can see there is also an insulation sheet provided for each uh, pole right so if we go back to our 3d model here so you see this portion, this section right here, this curved section is the sheet, insulation sheet provided for each phase. So you see for R phase it is there, for Y phase it is there and for B phase is uh, there as well. So that is insulation sheet provided and inside this uh, compartment there will be vacuum bottle and then there will be the contacts provided. And these are the connection points. So you see the, this, this is where we'll be connecting the incoming supply. Uh, and this is where the outgoing cables will go. So this is basically, of course, we will be connecting it in the series. So you can say these are the terminal pads where we'll be connecting the supply. Okay, so this is uh, the vacuum interrupter and you see this white color sheets. These are the insulation sheets uh, provided for each of the pole or each of the phase. Now for this type of vacuum circuit breaker, there are two different variants available. One is the fixed type circuit breaker another one is the withdrawable type circuit breaker so what you can see on your screen is a fixed type circuit breaker it means that if you are going to put this circuit breaker inside the panel most of the time it will remain fixed in the same position the another one is the withdrawable type which means you can take it out the circuit breaker from the panel and carry out the maintenance activity that is withdrawable type circuit breaker and of course the architecture of uh, both this circuit breaker will be different and it can be seen uh, visually as well so here uh, the first image what you can see is the fixed type circuit breaker you are going to put it in the panel and it will remain in that position as well and then this one uh, what you can see is the withdrawable type circuit breaker the difference is you see the arms of this circuit breakers are longer and also there is a dedicated trolley racking trolley is provided 
here. So whenever we need to have a withdrawable type functionality, we need to use another uh, important, uh, what you can say, component, and that is racking device or racking trolley. So this is how the withdrawable circuit breaker looks. You will see there will be a truck provided here, and this part here at the bottom is this racking device. You will put this uh, circuit breaker on this racking device, and then roll it back inside the panel. Okay, and if necessary, you can take it out as well like this. And this is the racking device. Very, very important part when withdrawable functionality is required. And it will also have a lot of interlocks as well. So the 3D model, what we saw basically, uh, this is a withdrawable type circuit breaker. How you can identify that? Based on this long arms, you can see. This is not there when the, we are using a fixed type circuit breaker. This is only used when there is a uh, withdrawable functionality required long arms are provided right and the next important component is the operating mechanism of course we want to close open the circuit breaker and for that we would need some operating mechanism and this will be provided in front of the circuit breaker uh, image you can see and this is mostly the spring operated mechanism just like what we saw in high and extra high voltage circuit breakers you can see the springs are used so it's a complete mechanical assembly uh, and also this will have all the control circuitries so of course there will be logics to open the circuit breaker to close the circuit breaker there will be closing uh, closing coil tripping coils different mcbs everything will be provided inside this panel right here which is the front part of the circuit breaker you can see one image here so those are some of the important parts of the vacuum circuit breakers so what we saw is the indoor type ais circuit breaker now if the vacuum circuit breaker is outdoor uh, then the components will be similar to that of what we saw in the sf6 circuit breaker the top portion here you can see it's the vacuum interrupter it is of porcelain and inside that there will be vacuum bottle and then we also have a support insulator to maintain the ground clearance then there is this is the base frame which supports all these three poles and then you have operating mechanism uh, which is uh, which will be holding the spring mechanism and all the control circuitries and of course then we have the support structure now this is the assembly of the outdoor vacuum circuit breaker clear understood now if you want me to make a dedicated video explaining the different components of air circuit breaker which is most commonly used in low voltage switch gear then do comment lvcb if i get enough comments then definitely i'll be making video on that and if you found this video helpful then do comment helpful in the comment section below so that i'll I'd, i'll come to know that these videos are helping you guys right so thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching Keep learning.